behaving. He saw them misbehaving. What he told them was, you know, if you know you're on the Lord's side, he said, come to this side. Uh, before he threw the Ten Commandments and, you know, it caught fire and most of them died. You know, we need to learn to take a stand. No matter how many people are going the wrong way, the wrong way will always be the wrong way. So please, I don't care how many people are going that way. Please don't go that way. Let's stand you know, the, the Bible says that have said before us, life and death. So we should take a stand, choose, make a choice. Say, so choose one. But he went further to tell us the one that we need to choose. Say, so choose life so you can live. So what is life? Jesus Christ is life. The word of God is life. The Holy Spirit is the life that we live. So choose, choose to do right in life so you can live. So by the special grace of God, the Lord will help us. You know, we went a little bit in depth last week. You know, we talked about the power behind us being greater than the power that is in the world. That's why we need to take stand and stand by God because that's where the ultimate power is. Praise the Lord. And then we talked about how the devil controlled those, you know, that cannot stand firmly for God. When you cannot stand firmly for God, then the devil have the right, the audacity to, come on, to, to tell you what to do, you know, to, to basically destroy your life. Praise the Lord. And if you don't know your stand, everybody's opinion, everybody's direction will be your direction. So the Lord will give us the grace to know the right thing and the grace to choose to do. Well, it's one thing for us to know the right thing. Another thing for us to do the right thing that we know. Praise the Lord. So tonight we're going to look at, you know, as a believer that if when we take stand for God, one thing that happens when we take stand for God, we we'll have no reason to fear. You fear the Lord. And you will have no reason to fear anything else. When you take stand for God, you become fearless. Praise the Lord. And another thing is when we take those that take stand for God, don't run, don't run when there is battle. Praise the Lord. We saw the same uh, example in the book of 1 King 18. I'm not going to read it's a long one. That talks about um, Elijah and the prophet of Baal. You know, Elijah was hiding for a while. If you remember the story, he was hiding for a while until the Lord told him in 1 Kings 18. If you look at 1 Kings 18, let me just look at verse 1. He said, after a long time, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. He said, go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will do what I will send the rain. Remember before that, Elijah was hiding from place to place. Remember in 1 Kings 17, he had to go to the widow of Zarephath. But look, how do I put it to make us understand it better? The thing is this. In as much as believers, we are fearless. We need to learn to hear from God. You go when he say you should go. I love that song that says, Jesus know the way to the wilderness, through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. Jesus know the way to the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. He know the way. And the directions have to come from him. If you look at this uh, story of Elijah, Elijah did not, he did not go on his own. He made sure that he heard from God. The Lord gave him directions. He told him what to do. Initially, if you start reading from 1 Kings, I didn't want to read that. I'm going to go ahead and read 1 Kings 17. If you start reading from verse 1, he said, Now Elijah the Tishbad from, from, from Tishbad in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither rain nor dew in the next three years, except at my word. 
that is a fearless believer. We all know who Ahab is. Even if you don't know him, you know his wife, Jezebel. And we know what his job is, what her job is. How she been killing all the prophet of ba all the prophets of God, and they are all in hiding. To the extent that Elijah thought that all the prophets of God have all died. The ones that have not died have bowed to bow. That's why they are still alive. So despite knowing who Ahab and Jezebel was, he was bold to go to Ahab. But he did not go to Ahab on his own accord. He went because he had from the Lord. Elijah was a man that had clearly from the Lord. That's why if you look at the book of James, I think James chapter 5, the Bible used Elijah there as an example. He said, Elijah is a man. He's a man like me and you. He's like me and you. But fearlessly, he declared that there will not be rain in the land for three years. And it actually happened like he said it. I will actually say that Jada was added to it. Because he says here, in the next few years, except by my words, it was three and a half years that they stayed without rain in the land. He was very bold. But if you keep reading, you will see. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Look, as believers, as we live as fearless believers, let's make sure that we have prayed true. Let's make sure that we are hearing from God. Let's make sure that our flesh is not what is leading us. Let's make sure it's not our arrogancy and pride that is leading us. Praise the Lord. Elijah heard from God. May the Lord open our ears to hear clearly from him. That's my prayer for every one of us. I will hear clearly. He said, my sheep, they know my voice. They know my voice. And they will not follow the voice of the enemy. Am I saying that every voice that we hear is the voice of God? No. Even the devil, after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 days, the devil spoke to him. So the devil still speaks. Praise the Lord. But we can differentiate between the voice, if it's the voice of God or the voice of man. Praise the Lord. So if you keep reading, the Lord keep talking to him. Verse 3 in 1 Kings 17, he said, Live here and turn eastward and hide in the Kent Raven east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the raven to feed you there. The Lord told him to hide. Praise the Lord. That you are fearless does not mean that when you see fire, you put your hand in the fire. No, 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 no. Does not mean that you will not take shelter and take cover when there is danger. Unless if you hear clearly from God, I say, go, and I will be with you. If you don't hear directly from God, you need to wait until you hear. Praise the Lord. So he, he, when he was here, after a while, the brook dried up, and the Lord moved him up. He said, no, you can't stay here. I want you to go to Zarephath. So I've already set everything straight for you. The widow is waiting to feed you. Remember when he got there, the widow herself was broke. The widow herself, the last meal she, that she had was the one that she will eat, she and her son, and then they can both die. Remember? But because the Lord was the one that ordered Elijah to go to the widow of Zarephath. So when he got there, the Lord made provision. That's why we need to learn to listen. Don't just go until the Lord tells you to go. A lot of us, we hear from God. Every one of us, as a child of God, hears God. The main thing is a lot of time when we hear him, we don't obey. And he's not a talkative. If the Lord keeps speaking and you, he sees that you are not 
you don't care, you don't want to do, he would stop talking. We do hear from him, every one of us. That voice that tells you this is wrong, don't, that's the voice of God. He doesn't have to say Samuel like he did in the case of Samuel. No. That still voice you hear inside of you that tells you, oh, don't go this way, go that way. Don't do this, do that. That's the voice of God. As long as whatever you hear confirms with the Bible, please, that is God. But if it doesn't confirm with the Bible, it's not the voice. That's the voice of the enemy. Praise. And if you are not sure who is speaking, wait. Wait and pray more. You wait. That's why the Bible says we should watch and pray. You wait. And while you are waiting, you are praying and asking God for clarity. So you don't walk into danger. Praise the Lord. So when you look at verse 18, uh, chapter 18, the Lord then gave him an order to go and show himself to Ahab. Praise the Lord. So he went and he showed himself to Ahab and he was bold. Imagine one man against over 400 prophets of Baal. That's one man. That's boldness. That's what the Lord is looking for in us. Does it mean as believers, in as much as we are bold, once in a while we don't, you know, even, even in largest, you know, if you look at First King 19, I use that a lot, you know, because he encourages me sometimes, you know. I use that a lot. In First King 18, with all the miracle the Lord used him to perform, killing the whole prophet of Baal in one, will I say in one day? But still, at the point he had cold feet. He had to sit and waiting for God to intervene. And God intervened. He can never, his, God is one, one, we, he will never abandon his soldiers. We are the soldiers of Christ. We are fearless. And because the God that we serve is a fearless God. And we don't run from battle. We don't. Because if you run from battle, that battle, you go wherever you go, you come back, it's still there. And the more you run, I think I've told you guys a story of when I was growing up. I was still in like elementary school and I was very young. And one of my, will I call him my cousin? Yeah but a distance cousin. Every time he's looking for my trouble, every day after school, he will stop on the way and wait for me. It's not like I did anything to him. <laughs> he will call me all kinds of names. And then when he see me, he will just put his bag and start beating me. And I won't, I won't be able to beat him back because I know he's going to kill me or something. I was afraid. So one day my younger brother said, Today, say you must force his name is in Dubis. Say must fight in Dubisi today, because this is this thing is too much. And officer, no, I say me fighting. Want want him to kill me? <laughs> My younger brother say, say don't worry, I'm going to stay by the side. If I see that he's beating you, I'll, I will join man and both of us can kill him. So that kind of encouraged me. So I I followed him. So when we got there that day, he was not the one. He just he already waiting for me to fight. Ah. I beat the devil out of him that day, put sand and everything in his mouth. <laughs> that was the end of fight. He never wait for me along the way anymore after that day. So as believers, you know, we are learning that we cannot fight, we cannot, we cannot run from battle. The uh, Israelites, they were running from Goliath. They were running from the battle. Because when they go, they will, you know, Goliath scares them and basically, you know, destroyed all of them. But a day came when David arose fearlessly. If you read well, 1 Samuel 17, I'm not going to read it. We'll see how David arose fearlessly and faced Goliath. And you know, the more the Israelites were scared of him, the more he was making noise. David came and said, eh, who is that that is defiling 
the God that the Israelites serve, an uncircumcised Philistine. Because he faced Goliath fearlessly, knowing that the God that we serve will back him up. He didn't have to do much. He killed Goliath like a, like a chicken with ordinary stone. He had five stones, but only one stone brought Goliath down. But you know, fear is horrible. I preached a sermon I titled Fear, the devil the devil's weapon of mass destruction is horrible. It is horrible. A lot of people get diagnosed with one sickness or the other. The sickness actually don't kill them. What killed them is the diagnosis. Once they hear, oh, they have a one brand name sickness. Eh? Ah. The devil will start bringing everybody in this world that you know that had it that never survived. But he will not show you those people that had it, but they came out, out of it. Even better than when they were sick. They came out looking like like man and everything. All the over, overweight and everything will go away. They're looking like brand new. Praise the Lord. So the devil is wicked. So we need to ask God to remove the spirit of fear in us. Imagine David. At a tender age, he wasn't the king then. He was not the king. And for the fact that he killed Goliath, kind of gingered him up, encouraged him. That was why after that, every battle that he went, he overcame. Every battle that he went, even he became stronger than Saul whom the Israelites know that was powerful. The women we are singing that David killed, uh, Saul killed in thousand, David killed in 10,000. They made the Lord break the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear have caused a lot of us a lot. But the, the Lord is trying to tell us tonight as believers that we don't need to fear. We cannot run. When you face, you really, you know, in life, we have to face it. You have to face the battle. You're having issues in your home. Face it prayer, prayerfully. Do what you need to do. Don't pack your things and run away. That does not solve anything. It doesn't. You face it. Do your own part. You try. Just do your own part. And if it doesn't work, we know that you've tried. You know that you've tried. Issues with the children, don't throw them out. Don't run away. Face it prayerfully. Prayerfully and at the same time doing what you're supposed to do. Praise the Lord. So they say, those that take a stand for the Lord, we are the soldiers of the cross. We don't run away from battle. We face it head on. And we face it fearlessly. And whenever we do that, the Lord always show up. He always show up. I want us to look at the book of Hebrew 13, 6 to 8. We want to read this one. It's very short. Hebrew 13, 6 to 8. It says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what I what can mere mortal do to me? This is NIV. He said, remember your leaders who spoke with word of God to you, who spoke the word of God to you. Consider outcome of their ways of life and imitate their faith. So who are those leaders the Lord is talking about? Moses. I know Moses, when the Lord called him in Exodus chapter 2, chapter 3, he was a little bit scared. But after the Lord spoke to him, encouraged him, he was able to go to the land of Egypt and did what he was supposed to do. What other leader? Elijah talked about him already. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel in the land of Babylon. The Lord wants us to be bold. He wants us to be bold. Take a stand. Joseph, the land of Egypt. He took a stand. He refused to defy himself because of whatever he will gain from Potiphar's wife. 
you need to take a stand. Can you name them? Esther, Deborah. So oh, I'm, I'm just a woman. You are not just a woman. Deborah is a woman too, but she did exploit for the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will give us courage. The Bible says in that Hebrew 13 verse 8 that we use this season, our bulletin is in almost everything that we do in reading. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he did it then, he can do it now. He can do it over and over again. That God of Moses is my God. That God of Elijah is my God. That God of Elisha, when after Elijah, Elisha did double, he's my God. We need to face it. Remember the story of Elijah, I think second king, I mean, if you second king chapter five, chapter four, chapter six, either four or six, when they were faced with invaders, the Bible says there, it said, ah, he told his, um, his servant, he said, don't be afraid, relax. Yeah, he said, don't be afraid. You need to relax. He asked the Lord to open his eyes so he can see. Yeah, Second King chapter 6. When you get a chance, you can read from verse 8 to verse 23. I'm not going to read this too much. You know, when you can read that when you get a chance. You see how he did not run. Because sometimes when you run, you don't even know if you are running into the people that are coming to, you know. He didn't run from the battle, he faced the battle. But when you see he faced the battle, but he had God on his side. There, was, there were already chariots. And I was listening to Reverend Omar, but I love to listen to him a lot. You know, I think, was it at early this morning? I woke up kind of very, very early this morning, like around 1 a.m. or something like that. And he was preaching a message of he said he was going somewhere and um and uh, a native doctor in that village waited for him along the road he said if, and they know he the man as a very brutal mean native doctor in their village so they told they said don't go he that that man is over there waiting for you so he said his driver said ah Oga, Daddy, let's go back home. Said, I, you know, I have little children. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> he said, just, said to just shut up and stay there. He said he came out from the car and he sat on the bonnet. This is the person that they are coming to kill. <laughs> he sat on the bonnet waiting for the native doctor. So the native doctor came closer and turned around and left. So they asked the native doctor, I said, what happened? He said when he came that he saw over 1,000, um, you know, 1,000 angels safeguarding Omokba. So he had to turn around and run for his life. But you know, that native doctor wouldn't have ever knew that there's something like angels, hosts of heaven, that defend those that take stand for the Lord until that thing happened and he met a fearless soldier of God. Praise the Lord. So he kind of, you know, he was just saying, you know, a lot of times we don't know the power we carry until we try to, until we give God a try. As long as we are not doing it to take the glory, we are not doing it out of pride. Let me prove that I can move mountain. Let me prove that God, like I was, I was uh, watching something on YouTube. One pastor was uh, having, he said he wants to have contests with any native doctor that, that, want to, um, that want to contest with him, that they should give them two dead bodies and see who will. I said, there is dead body everywhere. Do you need somebody to give you dead body? Go to the mortuary. Too many people, they, that, that their family want them to come back to life. You don't need that that kind of thing. He must be sorry, Pastor. He must be an <laughs> We will give him that. Body. I'm telling you, he was very serious. So. 
I think they, I don't. I can't remember his name or. He, he must be an unserious person. I, he, he is very, very unserious. <laughs> he is one of those uh, popular pastors in the east. Uh, they call him Odumeje. Ah, uh, somebody. Odumeje. Oh, I said, so this is uh, really drama. He's an Hollywood, he's an Hollywood pastor. Uh, this, this drama. <laughs> I said, uh, is this man? He was all over the news on YouTube. Oh, I said, Mr. Boski. Yeah. I said, is this man looking meta? I said, is this man looking for dead? That, that is his name. <laughs> the liar himself. I said, is this man looking for dead body? There's even in his house there, his village. People are crying and people are dying every day. Go and raise them. You don't have to compete with anybody, you know? But assuming assuming that they actually ever competed it would have been in trouble so i don't think god shows up in something like that he's just trying to showcase himself it's not about god you know but in the case of omar is you know it's like an example is the case of elisha in first king chapter six second king chapter six you know they came to meet him and god arose for him the Lord don't want us to go out as believers and start looking for trouble because we are fearless. I know they fear anybody. You have to fear somebody. As long as you fear God, it's important. And at the same time, make sure you hear from God. I believe or more by must have heard from God. God say, go and compete. Go and face him, don't run. I want to showcase myself. I don't think he went there without hearing God. If he didn't hear God, he wouldn't hear that thunder around and JJ, you know, but he stood because he heard from God. You know, I love the way um, King James and Amplified put Hebrew 13 verse 6. He says, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We may boldly say, Amplify say, so we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently say in bold letters, the Lord is my helper in time of need. He's not asking you to go and look for trouble. But when that time of need come, he's there as your helper. He's there as your defender. He's there to fight the battle on your behalf. You will not be the one fighting. He will be the one to fight the battle and give you victory. He said, I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? I love Amplified a lot. I love Amplified. If you look at the book of 1 Samuel 23, David is a very fearless man. He is. 1 Samuel 23, 17. He says, do not be afraid. For my father saw we never lay hand. This is, um, what's his name? Jonathan, talking to David. So don't be afraid. And you will be king over Israel. And I will be your second in command. Even my father saw knows this is true. This is Jonathan encouraging David. Say, don't be afraid. Sometimes we need an encourager. Sometimes we need to encourage each other. We need to, you know, I don't know how to put it so I can understand it better. Sometimes all oh, you need somebody to tell you, you know, you can do it. Pastor, don't be afraid. You'll be okay. Oh, uh, my sister, don't be afraid. You'll be fine. Sometimes that word of encouragement, but a lot of times when people come to you and they're afraid, a lot of us do that. Instead of you encouraging them, telling them that with God all things are possible, you are the one adding salt to injury. Telling them why it should not be like that. Telling them, giving them a negative report. That's not what they want to hear at that time. David knew here that his life was in danger. Maybe he was definitely afraid too. That was why Jonathan had to come to tell him, don't be afraid. Sometimes we need to, not even sometimes, a lot of times we need to tell each other that. Encourage each other. No matter how deep 
you know the prognosis. You know about that diagnosis. Ah, ah, they said it's chicken pox. Ah, is it COVID? Ah, I ask it everybody. Oh. You start, ah, I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor. Ah, if you see a maple, when you start telling people that, they get afraid. When you tell them, look, <laughs> there's nothing bigger than God. There's nothing God cannot do. Start telling them people that have gone through it and you know they came out without a court. People that have gone through it and nothing happened, you know. Encourage them. That was what Jonathan did here. He encouraged David. He said, do not be afraid. Can we be an encourager? Be an encourager. Let's not discourage each other. We can do it. Yes, we can. You go, you come out of this. Nothing will happen. You know, sometimes that's the word, the magic word that person is waiting to hear. That was why Job called his friend miserable comforters. Because when they came to him, he was going through a lot. They started telling him, maybe it's uh, the evil that you did that brought this on you. They started giving him, oh my goodness. May God minister to us. Even if we know that that person is guilty, that time is not the right time to tell the person, ah, oh, it's your sin or that brought that. Shebi, I know you. I know how you live your life now. That's why you got HIV. Me and you know how you got it. Hey, that's not what the person wants to hear by that time. To let the person know, you know, in as much as it's HIV, there's care for HIV. There are people that are living perfect life with it. I know, you know, I'm not encouraging you to do what you have done, but it's okay. It's okay. Just ask God for mercy. It's fine. You'll be okay. Don't worry. I know this person. I know that person. If you know, don't lie to them. You know, they have gone through it. And, and, and there's always people that have gone. They, you know, there's nothing in life. There's no problem that we go through in life that somebody has not been through. So there's always good things to tell that person, to encourage them to encourage them. The Lord will put the right word in our mouths all, all the time. You know, it's not about telling people. Sometimes you might need that word too for yourself. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, that we reap. Whatever we sow, when you sow comfort to those that are hurting, there's always a time, no matter how wonderful and how suitable life is, you know, there's always a time when you will need somebody to comfort you to say, you know what, well, don't worry, everything will be okay. And truly, truly will be okay. Praise the Lord. The Lord will put the right word in our mouth. The Bible says in Psalm 56 verse 4, He said in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? We, can, we don't need to be afraid of a man that can only kill the flesh. No. We need to be afraid of God. Not being afraid of God as if we are, as if God is a monster. No. Being afraid of him in reference. In reference. Loving him. Knowing him. You know. Going out of your way to do things for him. That's how we fear God. Doing the right thing, knowing that there's consequences for everything. There's, there's, there's blessing for every good thing. There is consequence. Also, there's punishment for every bad thing that we do. Except if God chooses to have mercy on us. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrew 4, verse 16, Hebrew 4, 16, he said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We need to come what? Boldly. Before God, come fearlessly. Because that's the last thing that Jesus Christ did before he gave up the ghost. He took care of everything. He carried our sin. He bore our iniquity. 
Immediately he closed his eyes and he gave up the ghost. The curtain on the temple tore from top to bottom. And what, when he did that, what happened? He gave us free access to come boldly before the Lord. Come boldly before him so he can speak to us. He can give us direction. He can tell us what to do. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 12, Ephesians 3 verse 12, he said, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith that we have in the Lord. We have confidence, we have boldness. The Lord has given us the spirit of boldness, not the spirit of fear. As soldiers of God, as those that have taken stand for him, we have that spirit of boldness. Remember, he's the lion of the tribe of Judea. And the lion is a fearless animal. So if our father is the lion, I, as I am a lioness. I am. I am. I am. And I, you know, I don't know how to put it, but a lion will not give birth to a chicken. That's one thing I know. That's one thing I know. The Bible says in Genesis 15, verse 1, when, when Abraham, when he looks like as if he was becoming shaky in his faith concerning the promise that the Lord made to him, made to him, the Lord spoke to him. The Lord spoke to him in Genesis 15, verse 1. He said, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, fear not. You know, according to the word of God, <laughs> there is a no fear not in the Bible. For every single day of the year, there is enough. That was how important that the Lord knew. He knew that things that would make us afraid. So there's too many fear not in the Bible. And when the, when the word is being repeated over and over again, when he say very, 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 I say unto you, that's how it's, it's like he's making emphasis, making emphasis on that word. Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, so we, we just, he said, I'm going to read that Genesis 15 verse 1 one more time. So after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham, I am the shield. I am your covering. I'm your shield. I'm your covering. And thy exceeding great reward. I am your exceeding great reward. So everything that you have done for me, I will be the one to reward you. I can never make promise and I won't say fear not. So I don't know what the fear in your life is, but the Bible is telling you to fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There's nothing the Lord cannot do. Don't be afraid. David said in Psalm 116, verse 6, Psalm 118, verse 6, Psalm 118, verse 6, David said, he said, the Lord is on my side. I will not be afraid. I will not fear. He said, what can man do unto me? When the Lord is on your side, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing. If you look at the book of Daniel chapter 3, Talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they answered the king. They say, We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. They already know. <laughs> They're going to throw them in the, in the fire. But they say, Still, I'm not. So even if this God doesn't show up, we will not still bow and serve you. If you look at Daniel chapter 6, talking about Daniel himself. 
with respect, with respect, he still refused fearlessly, knowing clearly that lion eats blood, eats flesh. He knows they throw him inside the lion, then that he's gonna die. Faith does not deny reality. He knows what it means to be thrown in. And say, yeah, it's okay. If I perish, I perish. Esther knew the consequences of her going to see the king when the king is not the one that called for her. She know, she understand, because that was why initially she said no. But after, she decided to do it. And God was with her. God was with her. Praise the Lord. So may the Lord give us the understanding daily. May the Lord give us the understanding. May he give us the, and give us the grace to live a life of boldness. Live a life of boldness. Live a life without fear. I'm going to read First King chapter 2. First King chapter 2 from 1 to 4 said, when the time drew near for David to die, he gave a child to Solomon, his son. I want you to listen to what he told Solomon, his son. He said, I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong. <laughs> when somebody says be strong, it's fear not. Be encouraged. Don't be afraid. Be strong. Act like a man. <laughs> but there are some men that act like women. That when they see roach in the house, they are the one running, and the woman is the one going to go kill the roach. So he told him to act like a man because you know he's believed that a man is always strong. A man is fearless. Verse 3 says, and observe what the Lord, your God, requires. What does he require from me and you? When the Bible says fear God, it's for us to obey him. So walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. He said, do this so that you may prosper in all you do and whatever and, and wherever you go. If you remember the story of Joseph, the reason why Joseph prospered in the land of Egypt was because Joseph feared God and the Lord was with him. The Lord can only be with men and women that fear him, that reference him. Praise the Lord. So the last word that David gave to his sons, and Solomon prospered. He did well. He built a tabernacle for the Lord. The only thing is he married numerous wives, which I don't even know why i don't understand why he should do that you know people, some people say because he did not fight any battle because david fought all the battle and won all the battle for him so he was basically bored and the only thing he i don't know if it was the dickenage <laughs> that said that in one of his messages i remember one of his message because all the battles were already fought and won for him so what else can he do than to marry women up and down and have concubines everywhere Praise the Lord, you know. So um, um, let me read verse four. He says, first King two verse four, he says, and that, um, he said, uh, uh, and that the Lord, and that the Lord may, may keep his promise to me. Because the Lord made promise to David. He said, if you can obey him, you know, do what you've seen me do. Obey the Lord. Reference him. 
keep his command. He said, if your descendants watch how they live, he didn't, he didn't even just stop with Solomon. He said, even his children's children. And if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. This is David telling Solomon what the Lord told him, David. The promise the Lord made, him, made to him. And he says, if you can do it, if you can follow it, if you can do the same thing the Lord told me to, that I did, say the promise he made to me, for me and my generation, he said he will keep in your own time and in the time of your children's children. Praise the Lord. If we look at Psalm 16, verse 8 to 11, Psalm 16, verse 8 to 11, said, I keep my eyes, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. I will not be afraid when I do what, when I keep my eyes always on the Lord. I will not be afraid. I will not be shaken. He said, therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoice. There is praises in my mouth because I keep my eyes on the Lord. Remember, the eyes of the Lord cannot be holding iniquity. He said, be holy for I, the Lord, am holy. So if I am keeping my eyes on the Lord, that means I'm, I'm, I'm definitely obeying him. I'm definitely doing what he wants me to do, which gives me access to be able to keep my eyes on him. To be able to keep my eyes on his words, do what he asks me to do. Say, so my body also will rest securely. You won't have no reason to fear. You won't have no reason to fear. He said, because you will not abandon me in the realms, in the realms of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay, the word of God. We have to learn to keep our eyes on the Lord, learn to fear him, learn to obey him, learn to do what he has commanded us to do. Praise the Lord. He said, you make me known. Praise the Lord. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Say so we enter our pleasures at your right hand. Praise the Lord. If we also look at Psalm 121, it's a good one for us to look at. I think we should know that Psalm 121 by heart. That's David's Psalms. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. Say, where does my help come from? If we know who our helper is, we will not have no reason to fear, no matter what it is. Ah, you know, as I'm talking to, I'm, I, you know, God is also ministering to me. Am I talking because I don't fear? <laughs> it is work. You know, I, I'm not talking because I don't fear. Hmm. It takes the grace of God, you know, to know, you know the obvious truth about this. And you still see yourself walking boldly in the midst of it. You know what the diagnosis, you know what the prog prognosis is. I remember when my sister was very, very sick. You know, she went to the hospital. And you know, it's really easy to tell people what to do. It's very, very easy. But it's not about telling people what to do. It's about you. Sometimes the Lord will also test you to see what you will do. So sometimes things come to us. It's not because we have sinned. Somebody gets sick, not because they have sinned. People that get HIV, it's not because they, they sin. Some H, HIV doesn't only come from immoral acts. It can come from injection, blood transfusion. You know, sometimes we go through trials because the Lord is saying, okay, you've been teaching all this and it's time for you to, you know, to, to also, you know, live what you preach. So 
when I went to the hospital, they told me I was just, you know, living and I was really crying because I know what it means. I understand everything. Huh. It, I was just, I said, you know, I started to pray. I called my sister. I said, don't tell anybody. Just keep it within us. Because the more you tell people, the more they start, you know, breaking it down and telling you all the bad things that follows it and all that stuff. So that's December, we went for crossover prayer mountain. You know, she was really sick, but she carried herself. She came to the mountain with all the reports, doctor's report and everything. After we stayed there about three days, we prayed and prayed and prayed. And then I told her, I said, Auntie, just throw all these things, just leave all these things here. She said, no. <laughs> said, no, I'm going to carry my report. I'm going to the, she, it's not like she didn't believe, but you know, our faiths are all different, to be honest. Our faiths are different. Throwing those things away, her faith wasn't strong enough for her to discard them like that. She said, no, 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 I'm not through them. I'm going to take them with me. I know God has viewed me, but I still need to go back to the hospital and let them run tests and confirm that truly that I'm healed and all that, said, which is good. And, and to be honest with you, that's the right thing to do. Today, she's walking around, no trace of whatever they diagnose her of, no trace. She's walking around stronger. She actually lost a lot of weight, which was actually very good for her. She's doing actually better than she was when she was diagnosed. So I really thank God. And I really thank God for, you know, the healing. I thank God for that healing. I am telling you, we needed that. I personally needed that. Because my spirit was just broken, you know. And when things like that happen, I said, God, God, is that how you, you know, after this? And I start reminding God like uh, Hezekiah, how Hezekiah reminded God of everything that he did and all that. I'm asking him, is that how I'm going to be paid back? And then you start counting, start thinking, if did I wrong God in any way? Is this something that I did? You know how they, 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 they will start bringing all those things in your, in your mind, you know? But that's where the grace comes in. The grace of God comes in to strengthen you. You just, just pray. Even sometimes when things like that happen, you can't even pray. That's why you need prayer partner. That's why you need to belong to a group that can pray. You need to belong to a group that can pray. Belong to a church that can pray. When something like that happens, my God, so I really had to pray. Look at the story of Eli Elijah in First King, First King uh, nineteen. When he had it all over, did you hear him? I didn't hear him praying there. What he was doing there was lamenting, telling God to come and kill him. So when something like that happens, sometimes that's why we need to pray with that season. I think I was listening to the youth on Sunday. You know, brother, your God bless you. I don't know if you are if you are here. Thank you. You're doing a good job with the youths. Was listening to I cannot. Amen. Oh, God bless you. So I cannot enter their Zoom. They they are really doing wonderful. I entered their Zoom. Um, I joined their Zoom class on Sunday at seven p.m. And uh, Pastor Pat was the one teaching them. It was wonderful about prayer. You know, somebody asked question about how old you need to be or something like that to pray. And I think the answer was, um, it doesn't, you know, the more you pray, the better. Because we need to start up. We need to start up. We actually pray better when things are good. I don't know about you, Mio. When everything is wonderful, you pray. That's when you don't need to sleep. That's when you need to pray. Be thankful. Be grateful. You pray to sustain the goodness of God too. You pray. Do what you need to do. You stop up because there's time that comes that you see you can't even pray when 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 it start bouncing. I remember my own time. It was hard to pray. Like when I sit down, I can't sleep. I'll sit down in my day bed and says, "All I don't do is just stay there and cry." That's all I'm doing. It's crying. I'm not praying. 
So all the prayers that you start when you could pray, that's when they come to play. Then you belong to a church that can pray, belong to a group, get a prayer partner, somebody you can trust. Somebody you can really trust. That is not Radio Biafra or CNN. You know, that when you tell them your prayer point, the whole world will not hear it. That you can easily message and say, you know, I'm going through this and that. Can you please pray for me? Lift me up in prayer. You know? So it's very important for us to pray. You pray. Pray with us, season, and the Lord Almighty will help us. David says here in Psalm 121, I still have time, 1 to 7. It's a verse that we need to know by heart. I will lift up my eyes to the hills, but my NIV says to the mountain, but King James says to the hills, from where cometh my help? My, com my help cometh from the Lord, who made heavens and the earth. You know, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over Israel, he who watches over you will not slumber for the fact that you know that he that watched over you will never slumber nor sleep. That's enough for us to live a life of fearless for us to live a fearless life, knowing that the God that we serve will not slumber, he will not sleep. When we go to bed, we sleep. Do you know how you wake up? Because God, while you were sleeping, the host of heaven were awake, taking care of you. They are awake watching you. Some people have gone to bed and never woke up the following morning. Yeah, I remember my husband telling me how his dad died. Said he came back from his, he was in the army. He came back from work and he took his, his one of his brothers and showed him all his land and everything that he had and all that. When he was done showing him everything, he came back home, he ate and he went to bed. That was it. That was how he died. Never woke up. You know? But when we sleep, that's why you go to bed and sleep. <laughs> because you know somebody is watching you. Those that take stand for God have no reason to be afraid. Because you can never stand for him and he will stand against you. God forbid. You can never stand for him and he will not be there for you. That's one thing that we have to. And I'm not going to read. I'm not going to finish. Psalm 121. You can finish reading that when you get a chance. I love Psalm 55, verse 22 to 23. It's a very good one for you to know to what have. Say, cast all your cares on the Lord. And he will do what he will sustain you. I don't know what the, I don't know what the issues are. Hmm. I don't know what the those trials are. I don't know what those tribulations are. I don't know what you are going through. But the Lord knows them. He said, cast them to the Lord. Hand them over to him. So that he will do what? He will sustain you. He will sustain you. How does he sustain you? He gives you all that you need to come out of whatever it is triumphantly. He will never let the righteous be shaken. He will not let you be moved. It's the word of God is not my word. But verse 23 says, but you, but you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The blood thirsty and deceitful will not live half, half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. That means he's telling you, the blood test, the wicked, those that come after us, those that come after your soul, those that causes you to live a life of fear, the Lord already got them. 
He already taken care of them. He said the wicked, the wicked, they say you we make sure that they go down into the pit of the kid. That means they will die. But I won't be the one to kill them. They will kill themselves. You know, so we, we really need to learn not to be afraid. I, you know, David said in Psalm 40, verse 1 to 4, Psalm 40, verse 1 to 4, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit and, all, and out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our God. He said, many we see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. He said, blessed is, the, is, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false God. Blessed are you in the name of Jesus. He said he pulled me out, out of the slimy pit, out of the pit, he pulled me out. There's nothing God cannot do. There is nothing, there is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing. There is nothing. He's a protocol breaker. He's Jehovah over you. He's Jehovah over you. We need to learn to trust him. We need to learn to be strong. We need to learn to live a fearless life. We need to take a stand and stand by it. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us. The Lord will encourage you daily. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said he will never allow us to be tempted or tried or tested beyond what we can bear. He will always be there for you. Always. 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 I want us to read the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 from 10 to 27. I don't think I'm going to. It's kind of short, short verses, so we might as well read it all. They are not long. Proverbs chapter 4, 10 to 27. The Bible says, Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. You know, I'm reading NIV because I want us to understand it well. He said, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goes, thy steps shall not be stained. And when thou run it, thou shall not stumble. He said, he said, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. And I just want you to hear, I said you should do what? Take hold of instruction. Take hold of the word of God. Take hold of the instruction. Listen to your parents. Listen. The book of Proverbs, I believe it's written by Solomon. I don't know if I'm right. You know, but it's, it's the book of wisdom. He was, he's filled with wisdom. I'm going to verse 14. It says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Instruction. Those that fear the Lord, they follow good counsel. Good counsel. That's why as parents, we need to learn to give our children good counsel. Don't tell them to do things that you know. I, you know, I remember growing up, my, my, my mom or dad will see you with anything that they know they didn't buy. And they're asking you, where did you get that from? You know, but there are some mothers when they see that their child with that thing that they know, she don't have a job number one, she's in school. So how did she, how can she afford to buy a handbag then or 5,000 naira? Say, what did happen? Where did the money come from? You know, there's some we don't mind. 
they will actually carry it and help you. Oh, just leave this one. When you get there, you buy another one. Buy another one from where? Where will the money come from? So that's how they end up there in school, but they are half prostitute, half student, because they have to do what they shouldn't be doing. So we need to be careful when we instruct our children. Let's instruct them, you know, with the fear of God. Let's instruct them with it. Because we're going to answer to all this. So we should say, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. I just love this scripture. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause somebody to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Praise the Lord. When you see a wicked person, you don't even need somebody to say that they're wicked. You will know by their fruits which you know them. By the things they say, you will know who they are. See, their ways are slippery. They do mischief. They don't sleep unless somebody stumbles. They have to make somebody to fall before they can sleep. He says, for they eat what? Bread of wickedness. I don't know what that one is. They eat the food they eat is wickedness. And they drink the wine of violence. But, verse 18 says, but the part of the just, the part of the, and I, I think Amplify says, the part of the uncompromising righteous is a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. I think I used the same scripture when I was ministering during this hour um, for this program, prayer conference. He said, the way of the wicked is as darkness. I'm going to stop right here. Praise the Lord. Verse 20 said, my son, attend to my words. Incline their ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and hair to all their flesh. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence. Ah, he said, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. My God. He said, put away from, that, from thee a forward mouth. That's a mouth that is filled with cuss. You see them, they rain cuss word as if it's nothing. You know? And they, everything that come out of their mouth are bad stuff, negative stuff. You know? He said, I'm preserve and preserve. Uh, Preserve lips. They let their eyes look right on and let their eyelid look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left hand. Remove thy feet from evil. It is the word of wisdom for us. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop right here so we can take some question and contribution before we round up. I know we have a lot of question talking about the spirit of fear, talking about as soldiers of Christ, we don't run from our responsibility. You know, I was actually watching um, in news i watch nigerian news a lot actually i don't watch american news really because i want to know what is going on over there I was talking about um one of the is it uh 
president of Khan in, I don't know if it's Kano State. I don't know if any of you had that news today that the Muslims, they said the church was really doing well in Kano State. You know, uh, they even have school and all that. I don't know what happened. They said somebody killed somebody and they believe that the person is a Christian. So the pastor, somebody came and told the man that they want to kill him, the pastor. So he left for one night. But the following day, he had to come back because of the students, because he wanted to make sure that he evacuated the student, you know, the heart of a shepherd, so that they don't go there and hurt the kids. So he went, he evacuated the student, he felt everywhere, everywhere was peaceful, so he had to stay back. I was talking about the spirit of fear. He left because he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to be there and get killed. Okay. So he, he felt everywhere was peaceful, so he can just stay with his family. That night they said the Muslims came. They killed him. They burned down his house. This is Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. God will help us. We need to be praying for Nigeria. They burned the house. They killed him. They burned down the school. You know? So that was how that man died. But the good thing is at least we know where his soul is going to. We know where he is. I know some of us, we ask, okay, where was God when he was killed and all that? Uh, I honestly cannot answer that. Where was God when he was killed? God was there, like he was there with the three Hebrew children, you know. And at the same time, I, I believe deeply, you know, that if God did not allow it, it would not happen. But do I know why he allowed it? I cannot tell you why, you know. That was how he came back and he saved the children. He saved everybody except him that was killed. So I guess he rather die for the rest of them to be alive. But the main thing at least, we know where his soul is. Praise the Lord. So let us, uh, let me let you guys talk. I think I've talked too much already today. So let's take some questions, some contribution. Don't keep, let, let's not keep quiet. Oh, he's not a pastor. Are you sure? Oh, no, I think you're talking about the other one. Okay. I think it's the other Hollywood uh, pastor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the guy that was killed today, they said he's like he's the he's like a president of Khan. He was killed yesterday or something like that. You know, I did as well. Well, at least the the kids. <laughs> weren't killed. It's really, really good evening. Bad. Good evening. Who who is it? Precious. Hi, Precious. How are you? Hi. I had a contribution. Well, um, I enjoyed when you said that um we should be giving um or we should be encouraging each other because it you know this life is. It can be very difficult and when you go up to someone and they're constantly giving you a reason as to um why you're there or blaming the situation on you mm -hmm. um just like you said it's not something that will make the person move forward and i know for the youth especially i'll talk about myself um and the children it's it's so easy to be caught up in this uh, society and you forget how or you forget you know that God is there for us all the time so when we go up to the adults you know and we are showcasing what is like going on in our lives we don't want to feel that judgment instead we want to hear encouraging words and that's something that I really appreciate with like the aunties and uncles in church because I have spoken to a few about how stressed I am and stuff and all of them always tell me you got this you go girl and even though like you know, that's what you always expect to 
hear, but it it pushes us, you know, and I really enjoyed you saying that um, we should constantly encourage each other. It uplifts us. Yeah, thank you. God bless you, precious. So I think, um, you know, we all had what precious said and uh, thank God we are doing that already, but let's do that more. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. The youths, the youths, they do need that. They really do need that. That does not mean that we cannot correct them or, or we will not tell them the truth, but you tell them the truth in love. And sometimes there are instances where they don't need to hear the truth that time. Just hold on to that truth for now. Encourage them, put them out of the situation where they are. Some are going through depression, put them out of it. When everything is fine, and then you can go back and talk. Then you can talk to them. Praise the Lord. So I need more contribution. Questions. Doesn't have to be contribution. Question. I know some of you might be asking the same question I'm asking. I had that story this today. My spirit really, my, my, how would I say it? My soul was, my spirit was so grieved. You know, and this is not the first time a man like that is dying in Nigeria and nothing happened. You know, these Muslim people, they will kill and they just walk, just walk like that. You know, so I know some of you might be asking the same question. Why did God allow that to happen? But the same God allowed his only son to die. He allowed him to die for the sake of us. You know, the same God allowed Stephen to be stoned to death after Stephen says, unto you, unto you or something, I commit my spirit or something like that. Committed himself to the Lord, but he still was stoned to death. So I know some of us might have that question in mind, you know. So if we can get some little Jara contribution to that, you know. <laughs> Brother, this is this your question now? Wow. Okay. Let me ask the question, Brother. Your ask. Brother, your says. He said, how do you differentiate between fear, fear not, and foolish, I don't know, what, what are your foolish fear? Yeah, I, I need an answer. I don't know what foolish fear means. <laughs> like, you know how you say we should fear not, uh, right? Every day. Everyday fear, no, you know, the Bible represented that there's enough fear not in the Bible, but then that means we should be bold. I, I think I didn't write it very well. What I'm saying, how do you differentiate between that foolish, uh, I mean, fear not and foolishly being bold when you are supposed to, you know, there's this, there are fear that we, there are some things that we need really to, like, the fear that actually will save us then the fear that is like, okay, God said, be bold. Mm. So I don't know if you understand. There I are times that understand. there is a necessary fear. Mm. I do understand what you're saying, brother. The thing is this, and I, I, I think the example I gave about Reverend Omokbae and the driver, you know, the driver was afraid and his fear was justified because he doesn't have faith like Omokbae. So if I were a more by, I would have told the driver to go and I can go by myself. Because I'm telling you, if those people had keep coming, they didn't go back, a more by wouldn't have died. Maybe the driver would have died because he was afraid. It was obvious that he can't stand that. Another example is um, the example of, was it Elijah? Elijah. You know, um, initially he had to go on hiding. The Lord told him to go hide. You know, are you? We are, we, I'm not going to say he wasn't afraid. He was not afraid. But at the same time, it wasn't the right time for him to come out. So we just need to 
do everything we do with wisdom. Like I keep saying over and over, we have to hear from God. Don't just do things because, oh, I want them to know that I'm bold, I'm a Christian and all that. Like that pastor was telling you that they killed, they said he left. But the reason why he came back was because of the love he had for the children. Because he didn't want to leave and then come back and they would kill all the kids and burn the school and everything. And then the kids would be there. So he came to evacuate the children. After he did that, they killed him. Okay, I see Sister Gbemi's hand is up. Go ahead, Sister Gbemi. Unmute yourself, ma. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when you were talking about the pastor leaving and coming back, you know, he had a choice, you know, because it says that the, the, he evacuated the children. So why did he stay? Why didn't he so, go to? Why didn't he go? So my thing was, you know, when you were talking about it, it reminded me of Paul. You know, in the book of Acts, it was warned by Agabus that, you know, that this person you know, not to go to Rome, that if he goes to Rome, he's, he's going to be born, he's going to be in jail. But he made a choice, knowing the consequences, knowing that this is what's going to happen to him. So he made that choice. So in the same sense, you know, because the Bible says the Lord speaks to us in dreams and visions of, of the night. So he had the pastor that was killed, he must have had a revelation, you know, but the thing is, was it fear that made him leave? And was it his faith that brought him back? So it was one of those things. It's either one that you say, you know what, I'm not going to be afraid. But the thing is, we have to use discernment as a child of God, mm. you know, not to be. Not to go by wisdom. Exactly. Not to be, put ourselves in danger and say, oh, I'm doing the work of God, you know, so. You know, we have to be prayerful. Everything we do to make sure we're actually hearing from God and not our own flesh or, you know, or confusion or trying to please men and say, oh, I'm the pastor, I have to go do this. Maybe, if, you know, who knows? Maybe if it wasn't even there, maybe they would have been fine. Who knows, you know? Mm, anyway, the thing is, um, I remember, you know, last year when COVID was really, really, really bad, there was a pastor that said that was going to isolation center praying for people. I don't think it was Nigeria. I think it was Ghana or somewhere. And then, and he was going, he will not wear face masks. He will not wear nothing. He just goes in like that. He ended up getting COVID and he died. So do you blame God or blame him? No, in as much as we are children of God, we need to go, we need to have wisdom. Yeah. Even if you are going in and praying for people that have COVID, you know that COVID is infectious. That's why God gave us brain. You should wear your face mask. That won't stop you from praying for them. You don't even need to go in there to pray for them. You can still wear, uh, Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his, his word and his word healed them. You don't even have to go inside a station center to go and pray for them. You don't have to do that. You can pray for any, from anywhere and God will answer. When the Lord raised Lazarus in John 11, he did not go inside the tomb. They rolled away the stone and he called Lazarus, come forth. He didn't lay hand on him before he came forth. So wherever we are and we pray. So he died and he died for nothing. I, I'm sorry. Because that's somebody. And you know, his members were out in his... Because they are kind of, I think the police or something did not allow them to go in. So they were on the gate. Oh, don't bury him. Oh, he's just sleeping. He, he, they were there praying for days and he never came back to life. That's lack of wisdom. That's the way I look at it. Praise the Lord. Okay. Any other question? Any other contribution? That he said we shouldn't fear does not mean that we should be stupid. No. Also, uh, let me let me ask let me ask this question as a follow up to what um, mm -hmm. we are discussing. Good evening, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to another session. Um, wonderful um, teaching session, Pastor. God bless and grace. Um, you. I want to enjoy. Are you starting another session? Carry on, <laughs> man. Ah, <laughs> uh -uh. this is enjoy alone. Where are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> why I want, I want to ask because you, you you wrote about foolish is it foolish fear or whatever but let me ask is it possible that sometimes our motive might be the problem oh yeah 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 you know That's if, right. if the motive of that man is okay let me show showcase to the world that you know i can go and break for um covid people and all of that you know so they can know that i'm a great man of god and all that you know it, it could be the motive because honestly i believe i believe that the word of god is true and the word of god is quick is active the word of god is everything you know i believe that if your motive and you you know what the word of god says he said you will eat deadly things it will not harm you the bible did except you are tempting god you know because sometimes we are you know we just do it's still you know out of the motive what is your motive if your motive is truly that you want to glorify jesus mm. that it is nothing about you it is nothing it's not a show off it's all about jesus and you go there, whether with mask or without mask, I believe that the power of God, I mean, there are people that wear masks and, and they still catch COVID. Is- there are people that we are in their homes. They never, one woman was saying, I didn't go out. The only time I went out was I went out to the store because she was so much afraid of COVID. You know, Pope, um, Job said, what I feared most have befallen me. So I'm thinking, I'm just putting it out there. Is it possible? that it is, his motive was not right. Mm. Because, I, you know, when God says do this, it's an open check. Mm. He doesn't, you know, tell you to do something and he comes back as long as the word of God has said it. And, moreover, and you believe it, it works. Sister Joy, something else is, did he really get direction from God to do what he did? So or that's he, what I'm saying, maybe no. is the motive is the motive oh let me show the world that you know i can do this like the man that went and jumped into the lions den in in one of the zoos because he wanted to be for the you know it's like jesus you know when the devil told jesus throw yourself down mm, that's right throw yourself he, down he, for he said he has given his angels charge over you but mm. jesus knew that if he had that's done right. that is a that's show right. off Hmm. It's nothing. It's no longer about God. It's now about flesh. It's now about pride. It's now about. It's now a show business. Hmm. You know. So because anything that is not all about God, then and the motive is not right. There's no God in it in the first place. That's true. You're young. That's true. Very right. So because sometimes you know we just you know. So I think that if whatever everything we do is about Him, is about our motive. Our flesh is dead. It's not about, you know, because when we are talking about the man and how bad, you know, of course we feel whenever something like that happens. But it could also be that the man has made up his, li- his mind that it's, it's okay. Because I believe that anything that God allows is for a purpose. Mm-hmm. Even those people that kill him, who knows, tomorrow they might be Christians. Who knows the encounter they had when yeah. they were there trying to kill him. Who knows, you know, because sometimes when these people that go to kill Christians, they see a kind of boldness and selflessness. There's something about dying for Christ. It's not an easy thing. But I also believe that God would have done something in their lives that, you know, like Jesus said, he that wants to gain his life will lose it, you know? And that's the thing that makes them, even in the face of death, when they are even, you know, I I was listening to uh, something and they were talking about this man of God that that was roasted on fire. And he was going there smiling. I, I believe that there is something that God must have done in them, which hey. sometimes I look at myself and I ask myself, can I really do that? But I think that there's a grace that is released upon them. Yeah. So I think that in everything that we do with God, it's all about our motive. Yeah. It's all about who is to be, who are you giving glory? Is it yourself? Are you trying to prove something? You know, because Satan wanted Jesus to prove that he can jump down and Jesus being God and knowing the mind of Christ and knowing mm. that that is not right. Mm. If he does it, you know, quickly corrected him. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. So it's, it's something that I don't really know. I'm, I'm asking it as a question. So is it, is it really 
that God is not able to do it? Or is it our motives that are not right? And maybe God is not leading us because it's not even about God leading you. When your motive is right, you put it all in the perspective and you will understand what God wants you to do at that time. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you know, uh, somebody, I think it's uh, Melissa. God bless you, sweetie. Um, he says here, Melissa says, um, Star Joy, thank you for that contribution. Question and contribution was just wonderful. What you said is true. You know, it, it might be, I believe, is his motive. He's trying to impress his, for, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, because if God is the one that gave him the direction, he will he will give him instruction on how to do it too. He will tell him to wear, you know, we have a lot of force to be honest. How many times how, did you wear face masks? <laughs> how many times did you wear face masks? And uh, I was one of my patients that have not taken shots. You know, where he lives, somebody came and visited them and then the person ended up been positive for COVID, like the following day or something like that. So he called my office. He was panicking. I got exposed to COVID, blah, 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 blah. He was so scared and he hasn't, and he's really sick. He's a very sick guy. He already got COVID before, you know, and no, he know how he feels. He didn't want to, he was just so scared. Come to find out we did the COVID test. He was negative. You know, but the fear was all over the place for the fire, but God protected him anyway. He didn't get, he's a Christian. He's December, he's a Christian. You know, he didn't get COVID, God protected him. So a lot of times we've, um, you know, we've gone, we actually hugged person that had COVID and you didn't, you didn't even know the person had it without you taking shot. And God, because God knows you don't know. He preserve you. But if you're doing it like uh, Jesus told, they devil say, don't you say you shouldn't text the Lord your God. Sometimes we're doing things to I see somebody's hand up. Sister uh, Nene. Sister Nene, your hand is up, man. Go ahead. Yes, Good evening, Pastor. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for this teaching, Pastor. God bless you. I just want to contribute and you know. I know that we've been throwing some chats in the chat and uh, some questions coming up. Um, I want to say that everybody is vulnerable. Mm. You know, every everybody is vulnerable. There's something that you know that makes you fear at some point, and I know that Pastor already mentioned that. You know, so talking about Elijah. You know, I, I put in the chat and I said that fear is a spirit yes. and it can be demonic. Mm -hmm. you know, so, it is very demonic. Um, and, and I'll explain that because, you know, that kind of fear that makes your heart jump, mm. that kind of fear that makes you so afraid, you mm. hear a news, it, 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 your heart thoughts and, you know, like all kind of things coming, running through your mind. And that's where the demonic fear is. That's where the devil is trying to, you know, put a lot of things into your mind to make you afraid. And that's where that scripture that Sister uh, Joy mentioned about the thing that I fear most uh, has come me. upon me. In 1 John, um, 1 John 4, verse 18, it said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. Yeah. That's the kind of fear that needs to be casted out because it's demonic. It's, it comes attached to your spirit and it makes you afraid. It makes you worry, you know? So that's, that, that is what I mean by demonic fear because it's a torment, fear heart torment. In that scripture, Briar dropped in the chat too. He said, first John 4, 18, he said, fear heart torment. That's the demonic fear that what, torments you. What translation is that, Briar? It's in first John, first John, Four, verse eighteen. John, it's King James version. Hold on, okay. Let me write it. First John four eighteen. First John four eighteen. Okay. Yeah, it says because fear hath torment. So no matter the kind of fear, the fear, the the the, the fear that is that has that, that spirit of fear, demonic, is tormenting. Demonic. It comes to you and it makes you afraid. It makes your heart jump. Mm -hmm. That kind of fear needs to be casted out because that's a demonic fear. 
Mm. So talk about Elijah. I will not say that the fear that Elijah had for Jezebel was demonic. It was a human fear. Yeah, it was, it was a human fear. It was a normal fear, the, the normal human vulnerability of, you know, just being afraid of something, you know. And there's nothing wrong with when you are, when you, with, when that human fear comes. It does not mean you are a sinner. It does not mean that you don't believe God. And for me personally, it's okay to run away and, and meet God at that place where you ran away to. Mm -hmm. And God is telling you, go back. Elijah ran away and God told him, go back. This is what you should do. Mm -hmm. You know, so at that point where you are afraid. But even before, before God told him to go back, God equipped him. He didn't just exactly. push him say go. No, he equipped exactly. him. Exactly. You know, so if he did not run, Jezebel could have killed him. So he, he could have could have killed him, wasted his life just so easily like that. So like that pastor, you, pastor was talking about, it's possible that for the first time he was afraid he ran away. But okay, like, let me stay. I know God will protect me. But God that brought that information to him is for a reason. Yes, you are right. There are some things that, you know, we don't get, we're not privy to those information. So when you get an information that something's about to happen, it's not a time to show, um, you know, like be macho because God might want you to actually run. God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. It's for a reason. God sent him to the raven. It's for a reason. He could have been in that same spot, mm. you know, and he would have gotten himself killed by Jezebel because this Jezebel was desperate to kill him. So, so those are just the differentiate, differentiating, you know, the kind of fear that, you know, comes to people. Mm -hmm. Is fear good? No, fear is not good. The only fear that is good is the fear of God and fear of sin. Mm -hmm. That's the only fear that is good. Yeah. So we must, we must strive to cast out every fear that makes, that torments us, that, that torments us, mm -hmm. that makes us so scared, worried about that prescription worried about that uh, uh verdict you know those kind of fear can keep us down and make the thing now come upon us mm. so we must cast out those kind of fear mm. praise the lord hallelujah you know um melissa god bless you she actually brought a scripture that i miss very important for this topic i really miss that scripture uh that's the book of proverb 1 verse 7 god bless you that says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction that's that's a scripture i omitted god bless you okay i see sister charity's hand up go ahead yes, ma. good evening good evening ma. good evening everybody god bless you ma God bless you for the teaching, ma'am. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. I just want to point out to what you said about uh, Mark by or what did they call him? Reverend mm Mark -hmm. That uh, he was able to face, you know, the native doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that, uh, you know, he, he told his driver to go with him, that uh, the driver wouldn't have gone, that uh, maybe... If that I'm, man if I'm was driver, killed, <laughs> that you won't run. So what I wanted to say is that to say, I <laughs> believe the driver, the driver will stay behind the Baba. Say, Baba, <laughs> you will stay in the front to be fired that they will kill you first. Praise the Lord, just like a Peter and, uh, <laughs> and Joseph and uh, Peter and, um, and Jesus, you know. He will let the boss to stay at the front, say, uh, at least if they kill you, I can still escape. Then uh, another thing I want to say is that I believe those uh, native doctors they will give their life to Christ when they see you. Yeah, know, because they are afraid. Those, uh, yeah, they will see when they see those angels. They will know that there is a you know power that is above oh, uh, their own uh, you know their own power. Mm -hmm. And concerning the man of God or the child of God we are talking about, mm -hmm. there's a time to hide and there's time to come out. Even Jesus was taken away. Yeah, from where yeah, he was right. not for a purpose. If that's not Jesus, that. our that's Messiah right. would have been killed prematurely. Right. He wouldn't ah, have fulfilled God, his God. destiny. So there is time to hide and there is time to, you know, to come out. If God wants you to come out, God will give you the boldness. And, uh, you know, there was a time I listened to Bishop Oyedeko a lot. And I wanted to be doing things like, you know, he talked with boldness a lot. <laughs> <laughs> some of us listened to him. <laughs> 
And there was a the Holy Spirit minister to me that, hey, you don't know where he's getting his own power. I can't fast like him. I can't pray like him. He go to mountain a lot. How many mountains am I going to? You know, I was warned by the Holy Spirit that I should take it easy because I'm not Bishop Oyedepo. Praise the Lord. So we shouldn't try and say that hey, I want to be like that tomorrow. If I go and face Baba Lawi, they catch you. God should help us. So, so let us try to listen to God and follow directions so that we will not perish like the, the Bible said, my own people perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. God bless you. You know, Sister Charity, really, remind, you actually use a very, very crucial example about Jesus. That's true. A time came that the Lord told Mary and Joseph in the dream, he said, carry the child and run. Because those that want to kill him, Herod was about to kill him. So they had to run. And when it was time to come back, that's why you have to listen, follow instruction. It was time to come back. He also told them, it's time for you to go. But those that were, that were waiting to kill the child, they are all dead. So I see, let me take Sister Precious first. <clears throat> Our time is almost gone. So you guys make it Sorry. happy. Um, I just had a question regarding the whole fear. Um, I understand like how everyone is saying that we should not have fear. And even if we do, we should basically be backing it up with the word of God. But I have a genuine question. Oh, yeah. So like me personally, I fear spider and snake and stuff. So how do I, um, like, where do we get the uh, drive to not be afraid of those things? Because I, I will run. So are we not supposed to run? <sighs> Precious. I fear, Ma'am? Spider, I fear spider and snake too. I won't fear dog. So I'm even okay, not, but are we so then we're not supposed to have that kind of fear, well, the, right? Is, the thing is, this that kind of fear is a, is, I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm afraid of dog. I don't like Okay, it. so we can. Yeah, you're gonna see snake and stand. Stay, if you stand, it will bite you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> 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 a snake will not bite you except you attack it. I don't know about that, but if you see snake, you, better, looking for people to bite them. you better kill, kill the snake when you see. Kill the snake right there before he jumps on you. Okay. Okay, Sister Joy, go ahead. I want to ask a question. So what's the antidote for fear? Faith. And then let me also, Faith. Faith is the antidote. How? If I'm afraid, how do I get over my fear? Fear. And I think that basically, most times when you look at it, it's the fear of death. Yeah, you know, Amarachi wrote a book. You know the title of her book? Fear, uh, fear Out. Fear faith Out, in. Faith In. Yes, ma'am. Woo! So it's on, yeah, it's on Amazon. Go and buy one. <laughs> I'm advertising for Amarana. Wow, okay. okay. She didn't launch it now. Oh, really? She, 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 wrote she did it. it was been, it's been a year or two years. So. Really? Yeah, it's a fear. Yeah, fear out faith in. That's okay, the, Pastor. That's so that's medicine. my one question. Then the other question that I have is, um, can somebody hear God when they are fearful? You know, because Sister Sister Charity said something that struck me. She said mm. that there is a time to run, and there is also a time to confront. So it's not every time that, as a child of God, you run. And it's not also every time that God wants you to confront, you know, your enemy or whatever that is coming after you. Mm. So, but if we are afraid, can we, can we hear, really God? hear God saying, this is what I want you to do? Uh, you, can still, you can still hear God. What's his name? Um, um, Elijah was afraid in 1 King 19. He still had God. That's your perfect answer. He was afraid. That was why he ran for Jezebel. But he was there. He had God. But I don't think I don't think that that run was was God's direction. But the thing is, whether is God or he ran away. He was still afraid. And then God met him and asked him, "What are you doing here?" He was still afraid, wasn't he? Afraid, but he still had God. So, in as much as you are, sometimes you know, how do I say that that woman? I don't know what they call it. That woman 
um instinct yeah just makes you better run flight and so, flight and, uh, exactly that's yeah, what i was flight, thinking flight and whatever it is. so right. you just, you just want to run that uh, right. then you know, who am i even running for i want to come yeah. back, something like that just like the lion the lion will run and come back come back you better, what it is. when you see the brother you better be <laughs> And when they run, yes. you take off too because the yes. lion will come back Coming to find back. out why. Exactly. Pastor, can I quickly say something? Go ahead, brother. We are done. No. As you yeah. finish, you pray so we can close. Okay. You know, the fear that there is uh, that Sister 